Hi everyone, so it's Coach Fred again for a little lesson on slope and the SAT. So um, you should have already watched video number one on slope. And so today we're going to talk about the types of questions that you could be asked related to slope. Remember, I don't have really have a crystal ball, but this is what I've seen. You could be asked to find the slope something as easy as that. Um, but it could be find the slope from points or it could be find the slope of an equation. Um, you could be asked to use the slope to find another point in a, maybe a familiar way and then in an unfamiliar way. Um, you could uh, be asked to find the equation of a graph and so using the slope would be helpful or possibly using the x and the y-intercepts. Um, you could be asked to interpret the slope or the x-intercept or the y-intercept of, a, of a, an equation in a word problem. And then you actually could be asked to decide if data is actually linear or exponential. So you're gonna to have to know how to compare the two. And slope, is, slope can help us do that. So this video I'm gonna talk about finding the slope and possibly getting to using the slope to find another point. So let's look at all the ways we could be asked to find the slope. So here's some questions I've seen. Um, so you could be asked to find the slope using, a, using just using the formula. So here you can see they gave us two points. Um, now what you might notice is though, the points aren't as nice and easy as we might think. Well, we're on question number eight. We're also on a non-calculator question. And you can see that my points are fractions. All right, so don't panic. We still use the slope formula. So as a reminder, the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so remember each of these represents a point, so we can call this x1, y1, we can call this x2, y2, or vice versa, as, as long as you're consistent. Um, and so then we could just plug them right into the formula. So 4 minus 1 all over negative 1 half minus negative 5 halves. Okay, so be neat about this because when you're dealing with fractions, you don't want to make a mistake just because of a little calculation error. So do each part separately. 4 minus 1 is 3. Okay, so on the bottom, I need to simplify this. So first of all, I have a negative times a negative, which is going to actually give me a positive. So I'm going to turn that to a plus. I have a common denominator of 2, so I don't have to do anything other than add the enumerators. So that's going to give me negative 1 plus 5, which is 4. So that's actually 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So my slope would be 3 halves. Nice and easy. Doesn't have to be harder than that. Rem remember that formula to help you remember it, change in y over change in x. And when you think of change, think subtract. Okay? All right, you could also be asked something like this. What's the slope of the line with the equation? And it's not in any, like, normal form I'm used to. So when you're asked, it might be helpful for you to get it into a form you're comfortable with. In the way it's written right here, I'm going to try and get it into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to try and get it into y equals mx plus b. All right, so how am I going to do that? So we have 3 minus y equals 6 minus 2x. So I'm going to try and isolate y. Because look, y equals mx plus b has it where y is isolated. So I'm going to subtract the 3 to the other side and add it to its like term. So now I have negative y equals 3 minus 2x. All right, now, is this y equals mx plus b? No, I kind of put it in y equals b plus mx because of the form it was already in. All right, so let's be careful here now. Now I've got negative y, and it can't be negative y. It has to be a positive y. So I'm going to multiply the entire equation by a negative 1 therefore changing the signs. So y equals negative 3 plus 2x. Okay, so now let's just look at the location of m. m is always being multiplied to the x, so my slope would be 2. Now you got to be really careful. If you don't change that negative y, then you might say the slope is negative 2, and I want you to notice that negative 2 is an answer to this question. Okay, all right, so I actually think I'm going to stop there. I don't want to make it too, too long, and I will do, um, you'll be moving on to video number three on slope next. Have a great day.